I'm a beauty professor and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.net. Gosh, it's been a while since I've been able to make a video and so I'm excited that this video will be bringing you my June favorite. I wanted to just bring Jethro into frame for a moment. My peekapoo, he says hello and he's ever good natured for my videos which I appreciate, don't I Jethro? All right, so I'm going to put him on the ground and get started. It's always my dream with monthly favorites that I could just pare it down to the super succinct list of products, 10 and under or something like that, but being that I spend an inordinate amount of time in my life testing beauty and skincare, and then a whole eight weeks goes by since my last favorites video, I couldn't keep it at 10. I think I have it more in the high 20s, but I will be moving through this as quickly as humanly possible. I hope your summer has been going well. Mine is definitely an adjustment in, in all the best ways. I My work schedule is drastically slowed down in the summer. I just teach a couple of classes rather than beyond full time and that leaves me at this point a lot more time to really devote and channel creative energy into the blog and also hopefully my channel. Now, and now without any further ado, let's jump right into skincare favorites. So the first product I want to discuss is the Hampton Sun Sunless Tanning Mist for Body. I haven't had the best experiences with the sunless tanners in the past just because there's always this worry that it's going to develop orangey or be obvious, get streaks, or you have these remnants on your hands or on your elbows, and that makes me nervous. So. I was intrigued by the fact that this is an aerosol spray and it's continuous so it just lets out this super fine mist that doesn't stop until you stop depressing the button and that ensures for very even delivery onto the skin. I am super pleased with how this turns out. Within a couple of hours this beautiful dark golden brown tan develops. I didn't tell my mom we went somewhere and I hadn't told her that I had tried this and a couple hours into our excursion she was like, wow you look so tan. And I think she thought I'd been laying out which I really try not to do as much as possible. And I'm like, no, it's this sunless tanner. And she was instantly intrigued as well. It just turns into the most believable tan. Something that doesn't quite fit into the skincare category, but you put it on the skin, is the latest fragrance in my collection. And this is by, it's the oldest fragrance line in existence. It's called Lubin, L-U-B-I-N. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it's called Grisette, which is inspired by the seamstresses of the 1900s, that turn of the century time. It said that they were hard workers in the daytime, but then they would go out to, they would go out on the town in Paris and kind of just have this youthful approach to living and life. And so Grisette is floral, but it has a beautiful vanilla musk dry down. It's got some rose, but it's very light on the skin and yet super memorable. And I like that it's just a unique fragrance. It's not something that everyone would be wearing and so you're unique in that, but it's also really pleasing. For skincare, I've been using a myriad of products. I'll link to my latest skincare round one and two kind of regimen uh, in the details box below. But I've been relying heavily upon the Mila Morsi line and that's available at Barney's and also Space NK. This is the pH balancing toner, which is amazing. It's alcohol free, you spray it on the face morning and night, and it just balances my skin. It rids it of any excess oil, but it never feels tight or uncomfortable. And my skin has just gotten so healthy using the Mila Morsi line. In conjunction, I've been using the dual action serum from the Mila Morsi line, as well as the revitalizing serum, which kind of tightens. All three are a trifecta for anti-aging and just a beautiful pared down skin care ritual. So I wanted to highlight this product that I've loved a lot from the Mila line and I'll link to my reviews on specific Mila Morsi products below as well. I also adore the SK2 line which I've talked about many times and this is not a new product for me. This is the Facial Treatment Repair C. It is not new for me but it's something I've just been using a lot in these transitionary months. When you go from spring here in Southern California to summer, it goes from kind of dry and cool to really warm and humid. And this has been kind of like a reset for my skin. I use it to help at night to kind of 
increase cell turnover, to heal my skin, but I've been trying out too many products and I just need something really simple that will improve my skin in one sleep, this is what I grabbed. So the SK2 Facial Treatment Repair C, just an amazing concentrated version of the facial treatment essence. So if you've had good luck with that, I highly recommend this. A uh, cream that I've been using a lot of the last two months, and this is just for those moments when your skin is really dry and needs extra nourishment, is the Cislea or Cisley Global Anti-Aging Cream. This is a definite investment price-wise. It comes in this jar here, and you can see I've been using a lot of it. It is so rich and thick. It has amazing reviews, and if you consider the price point and then read the reviews, it's pretty telling that this is not a lot of talk. It is an actual serious product with a lot of efficacy. And so I find that it tightens the skin, it hydrates, I love using it in my orbital area especially. It's just a really powerful skin cream when you're looking for something that's very rich. For sunscreen, I and my husband, we've both been using a lot of the Radical Skin Perfecting Screen. I've discussed this many times both on the blog and my channel. It's SPF 30. It comes out in kind of a very milky, almost white looking formula but it complete it dries down completely clear you do not get any kind of obvious white cast and it's just a beautiful primer for the skin in addition to giving you SPF 30 physical only protection so my husband was just using it while we were in Idaho last month or this month I should say on the golf course and he's like that sunscreen's amazing he hadn't tried it before then and he was just grabbing it every morning when he would head out so it works really well uh, across the board and it's lightweight doesn't melt on the skin and it's very kind to sensitive skin. Another product that gets consistently a lot of love both on my blog and channel is La Métier de Beauté Peau Vierge and I wear it in shade number two. I cannot tell you how many of my readers who've tried this have come back either via email or comment to say that they love it. It's just one of those products that is so good at multitasking. It is a lightly tinted, so you can see the tint there, and Shade 2 works really well with kind of maybe N NC, NW20, all the way to 30 skin, I would say. It's a good light medium shade. And it's an, uh, a moisturizer, an anti-aging retinol product, a primer, an illuminator, a tinted base, all of these things in one. I've used it consistently going on my third year now. I've gone through quite a few bottles and tubes of this. And once again, it's something I grab no matter what. It's non-negotiable, and so I felt like it just needed a mention because I was just thinking about how much I love this product. I would be absolutely devastated if it disappeared. So, Le Métier de Beauté, please keep this alive. And finally, a new implementation in my skincare routine, and an interesting one at that, is the Patchology Flash Patch Eye Gels. And these come 30 pairs in a container. And it looks like this. They're these kind of crescent half moon gels designed for the under and side region of the orbital area. And they're immersed in this highly fortifying serum that reduces puffiness, that reduces darkness under the eye, that fills in and kind of plumps up fine lines around the eye. And if you've just had like a terrible night's sleep, maybe you've cried, maybe you're having allergies, this just does amazing things to lift, tighten, smooth, brighten, all the things you want the under eye region to be doing on its own. This helps to make that happen. Before I mention my face favorites, I do want to mention what I'm wearing on my face right now. And that is a combination of a few products, some of which will be included in this video and some which won't. But I've discussed them on the blog and we'll link to them below. For foundation, I have been wildly impressed with these two little pots of makeup. This is by the French brand Visart, and I have shades Amber and also shade Sycamore. This is a highly concentrated pigment. I mean, I barely touched the contents in the pot to get this full opacity. And you can use it as a foundation, a concealer, a spot touch up, it just covers anything, but it looks so natural, and it has a slightly satin finish, so it just looks like really healthy skin. I love the alchemy of kind of mixing my own foundation and getting the outcome that I prefer, and this is just one great way of doing that. All of the Visart products can be purchased at Friends Beauty, which is located in Los Angeles, 
and is a favorite amongst makeup artists in the industry. And uh, the Visart line in general is a pro line. I'll be talking about a palette a little later, but I will say that it's gained a lot of notice in the just beauty world. And so those of us that might not be makeup artists, but just love great beauty are finding a lot of happiness with the Visart line. Also on the face, I'm wearing something brand new. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Norman Parkinson collaboration highlighter and this is called the dreamy glow highlighter it's a powder it's got a beautiful champagne finish i'll be working on a blog post with swatches of everything this week but this collection just launched it comes in this compact that has it's emblazoned with a picture created by norman parkinson one of his fashion photography shots and i just love everything about this on the face, the highlighter just catches light nicely without looking overly shimmery or shiny. And I just like to tap it across here, down here, through here for some extra dimension. So snap this up, it is limited edition. Lips. I'm wearing a combination of a product I'll be talking about shortly, as well as the Charlotte Tilbury Norman Parkinson collaboration. It's the Matte Revolution shade called Miss Kensington, and that is an LE for this product collection. Miss Kensington is a very pretty peachy pink nude, of course, and I would say it's most similar maybe to Tom Ford First Time, which I have discussed and will link to, um, but it's a little bit lighter both in texture and in depth. But it definitely is a nude that would flatter a spectrum of skin tones because it's not so light as to completely wash you out. Quickly on fashion, I just had two pieces I wanted to discuss because I've worn them a lot in the month of June. And one is this amazing wedge meets gladiator sandal from Topshop. It is such a fun piece because they are so comfortable and on top of being very on trend and you know we see a lot of wedges and certainly a lot of lace up gladiators this season the fact that they are so comfortable really well made i think just makes them stand out for me they are suede and the platform is such that you get a decent amount of height nearly three inches but because it's even you don't feel it these look cute with shorts with skirts with jeans i love them and last at last check they're still in stock so i just wanted to showcase them quickly and then I also want to talk about this flannel. I am a flannel fiend. I don't know about you, but I have flannels from like 10 years ago that are still like prized garments for me because I love them so much. And a good flannel, you just know when you find it. It's not too heavy, but it's still a little bit warm. It is typically a neutral color in my preference because you can grab it and wear it with anything. This one I picked up at Topshop as well just last week. So it's newer, it's thin, it's cotton, it's light, but it's warm. And it's just a great combination of kind of this cream off-white and then black stripe accents. It goes well with so many things and I knew the instant I touched it this was going to be a new flannel for my menagerie. So little word on the flannel and while I could talk about a lot more fashion I'm going to halt right there. Back to beauty. So to discuss some additional products for the face that I've been loving. The first is this Guerlain Terracotta and this is the tan enhancing bronzer for the face and the decollete. I think this could not have been released at a better time. Summertime is the time that we're concerned about having that bronziness kind of extend to the neck area and maybe a little bit in the chest. We know we're not supposed to get sun on the chest, so uh, adding a little bit of bronzer there is a great idea. Not only is this just like stunning, but beyond that, it performs so well. I'm wearing it as the only bronzer on my face right now, and I just bring it through here, through here, through here, and across my hairline, and it just imparts a really lovely, natural, light tan finish. There is the slightest hint of shimmer, but nothing major. It's more of a satin finish, and it has this gardenia-like scent that is just intoxicating. It's not your typical Guerlain Violet scent. It's something very summery and different. And the components or the ingredients in this bronzer are such that your tan is supposed to kind of develop or enhance kind of like a sunless tanner. I haven't used it enough maybe to notice that because I do switch up every couple of days. But I will say that it stays For in place. concealer, I've been going back to my trusty Clay de Peau concealer. There's a reason 
this has gotten so much attention over the years. I actually wear beige even though I have a, the color up which is okra and I'm darker right now so I could get away with that as well. But I love beige for the under eye region. Just the slightest amount tapped in either with my finger or my Jenny Patekin Multi Blender Brush is enough to just melt it to the skin and brighten up and smooth out the under eye area. So it's always my purse. I know that it's an expensive concealer. But look, to put this into perspective, I bought this tube, I think, nearly three years ago. And while I've used it off and on, it's gotten consistent usage in some. And I still have a decent amount of product. So it's worth it in terms of how much color payoff and lasting power you get, not only in the moment, but over the span of years. Next is the Kogendo Silky Moist powder compact and this is a fairly new release from Kogendo. It looks like this eyewear shade 123 and as powders go I am just very pleased with this new texture. It's If you use the triple lightning powder which I did for many years you'll notice this is even smoother and that powder was fairly finely milled. It has the same color kind of correlation as the foundation so I can wear 123 in the aqua foundation and in the moisture foundation and the same would be the case with this it's a great shade for nc 25 to 27 skin and it goes on the skin it mattifies but it does not look powdery at all you also get decent coverage so if you're having a really great skin day you might just want to wear this over a primer or tinted moisturizer i use it as a touch-up powder throughout the day and also to banish shine and it just completely cleans up the face makes your pores kind of Invisible. Finally for face is the Chiku Hodo GSN 4 brush. I have used this brush continually since April, since getting it. And this is a great blush brush. I am so loving how soft the bristles are, yet it deposits just the right amount of color. So I use it for blush and bronzer and no fallout on the bristles. It's just a gorgeously crafted brush. I get what all the hype about now is with the Chiku Hodo brushes. I didn't know until I tried them. And a focal point of my eye June favorites is this Visart palette in the Sultry Muse. This palette is so easy to work with. The shadows are pigmented. They are silky, they are crease free, they stay in place without fading, and I can just kind of mix as I please any of these colors. The Sultry Muse has a satin finish, but it's not a glittery finish, no fallout, no excess powder. These shadows are amazing, and I would say this is a great place to start if you like a satin finish. I'm wearing a combination of this shade and this shade on my eyes right now, with a little of this built up to the brow bone, and wow, it's just like such every time I wear something from this palette someone's like hey what eyeshadow are you wearing and I wish each of these had their own name but instead I'm like Visart Sultry Muse that's what it is then I have been using a lot of the by Terry Ombre Black Star in my favorite Bronze Moon it's a lifetime favorite I suspect it's so easy to wear and virtually waterproof once it sets so when I'm in a hurry, I just pop this on, blend it with a brush. Sometimes I mix it with brown perfection if I want a darker brown taupe effect. But Bronze Moon is always in my makeup bag and it's been a favorite the last couple of months as I've been in a hurry a lot. The final eyeshadow is the Burberry Nude Shadow. This is the glow version and it's newer and gosh, it's just so pretty. It's lighter than a, a traditional taupe, but and very neutral. It's not a warm taupe. It's a neutral taupe and you can wear it wet or dry. I wear it as a completely like singular wash of color on the eyes above and below and it's just beautiful. It's got a, a lovely reflective kind of effect but it's not glittery. For mascara, I am wearing and I've been using a lot of the Guerlain Maxi Lash in the So Volume version which is new. And besides the stunning mascara tube, I've got this flexible brush that just puts the mascara just where you want it. And the last few times I've worn this, and I really only put like two coats, it's taking me about a minute and a half, and then I combine it with this Surratt Releve eyelash curler, and the combination just makes your lashes look almost fake, which is exactly what I was going for. So I've had a few people say like, hey, what's going on with your lashes? Are those real? 
what are you wearing, what's your mascara. So this has been my combo the last couple of months and I can't say enough good things about the beauty for lips, which I always like to say for the end. I am using a lot of these two base products. One is the Orlan Balm Magnifique or Magnificent Lip Balm. It has such hydrating properties. I like the kind of slanted applicator. The squeeze tube is great. And the balm itself is clear, but it just kind of revitalizes the lips, brings some color to them. It's not overly sticky and it creates this kind of seal over your lips that traps in the moisture where your lips just feel cushiony and protected all day long. It doesn't wear off quickly. It's got great lasting power. Also, I love the La Prairie Cellular Luxe Lip Enhancer. This looks like a very new lipstick, but it's really meant to plump the lip area and kind of neutralize it to get it ready for nudes or any other color. I can't explain all of the elements of what this does when I put it on. All I know is my lips look better and it's a great base for lipstick. Three colors to speak about. One is the Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy Shine Lipstick in Mischievous Rose, which is a kind of rosy nude pink. What else? And these are really shockingly beautiful because there's a lot of color for something that has the word shine in the title, and that's what drew me to them initially. Then there is the Edward Best Lasting Kiss Lip Stain. I have it in Unnatural, which is a very, very creamy pigmented kind of mauve nude rose. And I have that mix right now with the Charlotte Tilbury color I was showing you earlier. It is a truly a stain, but I love that the stain is not like red, bright, candy color. This is like a true nude stain and creamy at that. I've had this for quite a while, but I've been using it nonstop for the last two months. So I, if you haven't tried anything from Edward Best in a while, consider this lasting kiss formula because I have nothing like it in my obscenely large collection. Then there is an old favorite that I recently rediscovered, I repurchased actually. I remember wearing MAC Faux in college. Very clearly, I have very distinct memories about the makeup colors and names that I have used over the years. Does anyone else have that where you can just remember a name and you're like, this is what it was, this is when I wore it, this is who I was as a person at that time. Makeup is like that for me. It kind of harnesses my memories. And faux is, was a very specific period in my life. It was like 19 and it was a great nude color then. It's a great pinky nude color now. Faux looks like it would be dark and even swatched it looks almost as dark as the Edward Bess. But on the lips it's a lot lighter. I don't know how that works but that's been my experience. It's a creamy finish that is really flattering. It adds kind of volume and depth to the lip. It's not overly drying and has that great MAC vanilla scent. And finally, lip gloss. This is the Marc Jacobs Enamored Lip Gloss, the newest formula, and this is in the shade Moon Glow. And I ordered it a couple months ago, sight unseen, and I'm so happy I picked this one out. It's a very pretty pale nude pink. It's got enough opacity to be doing something on the lips and I think this is a massive improvement on the initial Marc Jacobs lip gloss formula which I found to be a little gritty and sticky. This is plush, it's cushiony, it's hydrating, it has a minty smell but not a minty feel on the lips and it just imparts beautiful shining color. So Moon Glow is a favorite. And so concludes my June favorites. Though if I'm being honest and realistic, it's likely a conglomeration of both May and June favorites since there's been quite a lull in my video production as of late. If you've made it to this point in the video, I want to thank you for sticking around because I have a hunch once I'm done having edited all of this footage that this video is going to be a long one. So thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear which products stood out to you as interesting or maybe you love them as much as I do and I welcome your questions and comments below. Also, if you have any specific requests for upcoming videos, it's my sincere hope that my summer schedule continues to let me film much more than I was able to towards the end of the school year as I was wrapping everything up. So please leave your requests below. I wanted to mention that I'm really thankful Beauty Professor hit 5 million views a couple of 
weeks ago and I want to thank you for being a part of that if you've been visiting me there as well so please don't forget to visit me at Beauty Professor which can be found at beautyprofessor.net take care